What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name's Gym Leader Geo, and this is the Locker Room Episode 13. It is postseason, ladies and gentlemen. The San Francisco Giantes are team building for the San Diego Chim Chargers and their coach, my good friend, the Lord Envy himself. Now, everybody here already knows I have a storied history with Envy. He's my bro, he's my boy. We team build together. We practice for each other's battles every week together. Uh, he is very much in my head. I like to think I'm very much in his, but he's very hard to read sometimes. Uh, he makes very powerful, strong, hard reads on his opponent, and it can be difficult to play around that because there are times that he sees win conditions that I don't see. His team prep is phenomenal. So I'm really excited for this match. Uh, I've had two of some of the most fun matches I've ever had this like in competitive Pokemon ever have actually been both against Envy and both of them this season. Like I would say some of my favorite matches that I've ever had in all of Pokemon. Looking back, yeah, for, I mean, <laughs> certainly my first match against Envy. The second one I think was uh, was hilarious, <laughs> but as we all know, the, the fabled, the fabled hacks. Uh, and that hacks is actually I, partially something I should be thanking for getting me into the playoffs. So I wanted to speak a little bit about that because I didn't really say much in the last video. Uh, I reached out to Joey just to congratulate him on a good run. That man had a hell of a season. He, he was so rocky. He was so affected by RNG this season, uh, both in getting him wins and costing him wins. And uh, it's just, it. he played amazingly from drafting stuff that he really just wanted to play with. It's, it's a new gen, there's new Pokemon he was excited to, it's not new gen, but there's, there's new Ultra Beasts and he was excited to play around with what he wanted to play with. And some people would have felt that his draft wasn't super strong at the beginning, but he played it off and he went on a tear at the end of the season there. And I just, you know, I had to say something to him like, I know he knows, uh, this is the game we play. He always says that in his videos. He says, this is the game we play. He knows that there's hacks and it's disappointing because he put himself into a position to make the playoffs. Uh, and then that literally got robbed from him. I, I don't feel good that that happened to someone else, but I'm, I'm happy that I made the playoffs. I did the best I could do. And I appreciate all the love. Uh, people have been really positive and supportive on my videos and I gotta be honest I was expecting a lot of hate um, for getting in with hacks and I got some uh, it's you know the nature of the beast of of GBA fandom uh, that people will go to other people's videos if they're not their fans uh, when something they did affects their fans and, and, and give them some some less than kind words and so I was expecting that I was expecting a lot more of it so I do I do want to give a shout out to everyone that um, Thank you guys for the positivity. It's been a very positive season. Uh, that helps me a lot because it's winter. I get very seasonal effective and very prone to letting these things get to me. But you guys have been so amazing and I'm ready to carry that into the postseason. Uh, so we are team building for the San Diego Chim Chargers. You can see my team over there and you can see the 11 Pokemon Envies got drafted up above my head here. You guys have seen two of these videos already. So there's a lot about the team building process that I've already shared with you. But so this video is more gonna be about like, okay, what are the 11, excuse me, what are the 11 Pokemon I bring? Or what are the, sorry, what are the six Pokemon of my 11 that I'm bringing? Why has my mindset changed? And what do I think uh, about him? So without further ado, let's go into my, uh, my six. I'm bringing Remix, uh, Choice Scarf Ditto, of course. Uh, we've got Proto, the Mega Scizor, Big Burb, the Archaeops, Tefiti, the Shaman, Home Yowner, the Mew, and Headwind, boom, the, uh, the Blacephalon. So let's start off with the Remix. Um, in both of my games against Envy, Remix has basically been my win condition, and the reason for that is the things on my team, we've seen this in both of our last two games, the things on my team that can beat Envy fall to Mega Pinsir. So if he holds on to Mega Pinsir, I have to hold on to a Mega Pinsir answer. And I've got two of them, potentially three of them this week. I need Mega Pinsir gone. I, I, I have established many times over that he has beaten me in the uh, frustration return wars. I'm going return again this week. Um, he went frustration twice. I don't think he'll go it a third time, but he's He's won this game against me multiple times. Um, 
So I'm, I'm, I'm banking that maybe he goes return this time. We've sort of been in a weird position in our ditto versus pincer mindset. He knows that it's a problem matchup for him potentially. Um, and pincer, that's why I have it on the top row. If you'll see, as as I do, guys, uh, the 11 Pokemon he's bringing up a, up above. I'm predicting Tapu Koko, Mega Pincer, and Polion as the for sure brings. On the likely brings, I have Kyurem, Gligar, and Amoongus. On the not surprised brings, I have Hoopa, Silvali, and Slowbro. And on the I don't think they're comings, we have the Magmortar and the Raichu. Of course, Raichu very fast the uh psychic electric coverage is fine but it just for me i don't feel that it packs the power necessary and he knows that i have things that could be designed to bring against it that's why i don't think he's bringing it the mag mortar it's too frail and too slow against my team and so i have the only way he could make it fast enough that it's not beaten by literally every one of my offensive mon is if he scarfs it and then if he scarfs, it's too easy to wall. So that's why I don't think he brings it. Last time we played, I had it higher up. And the reason for that was I knew MV didn't really have anything to lose necessarily from trying out some of his other mons and doing things with them. Uh, and then looking at what he ended up bringing, it was a pretty cool set. So it, it could have done something, uh, except that I just went so ham with my um, explosion tech. Um, that it <laughs> wasn't, he was forced to sack uh, his lower tier Mons to preserve his uh, ultimate win condition. So it didn't end up doing anything from last time. I don't think he's going to bring it again this time uh, just because I kind of have the advantage on him speed tier wise. But we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. Slowbro, I just don't think it comes because as far as physically defensive Pokemon are concerned um, to try and take on things like my Big Burb, like Toys R Us, Gligar's just probably better for that. He could bring both, but I don't, I just didn't see that as being super likely. Uh, it does match up pretty well versus Toxapex, but I think he would want more offensive momentum um, if he were prepping for the Toxapex. Silvali, I have it relatively the same position. Silvali can do a lot, but I don't know that it does much more, even with good prep on his part, than go one for one. I don't think that's the game he's trying to play. I don't think that's ever the game he really tries to play. I think he brings it as answers to things. Last time he brought it, I was so sure it was going to be dark, but then it ended up being, um, was it a salt vest, I think? That he ended up bringing which was a cool tech um and blacephalon does notably well against his team if you look at the matchup it does do very well against his team and so i he's going to need something as a blacephalon check or answer and if not silvali then right next to it we can see hoopa who can also be a relatively decent uh blacephalon if i'm locked in if i'm gonna go um scarfed or specs or something like that being locked into shadow ball he takes that okay uh, and can obviously okay me back he could go scarf potentially outspeed me if i'm not scarf hoopa's uh, the dark typing on it i know it's also part psychic but the dark typing on it um can be useful against headrent boom um amoongus is such a staple for his team uh, it, it's provides amazing coverage uh, alongside things like the empoleon and the gligar uh, so i i very much think that's coming he's use that very effectively at negating the full usefulness of uh, my of my Haxorus in the past. Gligar the same way. Uh, Kyurem, just because Kyurem is uh, hard, he plays Kyurem very well. Offensively, I don't have a ton that is that can reliably wall it. However, a big reason I have Proto is to provide me with an answer so that thing can never get out of hand. So that's why a big reason why Proto is coming. Uh, and I need to maintain that for as long as Kurum is alive. Uh, and then the top three, you already know the top three. They come they come relatively frequently, um, certainly against me. He actually hasn't been playing the Mega Pincer quite as hard and fast uh, as I would have expected looking at his draft. But he, I mean, Nemby's done very well. Uh, this season so um so there's that let's talk about uh ditto the reason hp ground is because we've seen hidden power on a few of his mons and two in particular the empoleon and the hoopa i could switch in against them if i'm anticipating the hp fire for 
Scizor or something. Um, and HP Ground is super effective against the Empoleon, um, as well as the uh, Coco, if Coco could potentially be running it. And I think there's a decent likelihood that Tapu Coco would run HP Fire. It's fast enough, it can take out the Scizor. Uh, it's not bad against Tefiti, which is, in my opinion, one of my better switch-ins to Tapu Koko. So I think having HP Ground, having something that's super effective against both of them could be useful, and so that was kind of why I was thinking there. Ice Ground is very good against MV's team just in general, so I think it's having one of those was uh, probably the better answer. And then as I was looking at it, I didn't really feel HP Ice because I'm thinking like, you know, that's for Gligar. What am I going to switch into that Gligar is going to switch in against me that I'm going to lock into HP Ice? I don't really see it. Uh, against the Mega Pinsir, maybe, but we'll we'll have to see around that. Like if he's Pinsir in against Ditto, I'm going to have to get Ditto out anyway, probably, rather than pop off an HP Ice, which probably wouldn't take him out anyway. Uh, and then the Amoongus, uh, it's just going to wall. Um, HP Ice is too weak. It's going to need to be a more powerful move than that if I'm going to stay in with something and try and take him out. Um, so, so Ice felt like the wrong move for me. Ground feels like a good way to provide super effective coverage against both the Empoleon and the uh, Tapu Koko. So that was the thought process behind that. Proto, this is a fun one, guys. Bullet Punch, Bug Bite, Curse and Roost. He's actually not Technician. He's Light Metal um, because it was a... In order to have Curse legal on scissor uh you have to have hidden ability so uh i, ju I just found this out because i just genned my team uh so shout out to common dude for helping me figure that one out uh bullet punch bug bite curse and roost i'm really excited for this one um because getting a curse off uh before the mega pincer comes in can mean that uh, i take it on 1v1 the uh, ability to set up but also increase my defenses means I'm not weak to foul play, which could have been a problem um, against uh, if, say, Amoongus can learn foul play, which of course was always a problem that I was looking at with things like the uh, Toys R Us. Toys, like, offensive setup against him and providing me with the ability to break through some of his walls is huge, but the problem is that in doing so, I really a lot of the time set myself up to get KO'd in return. Like Dragon Dancing with Toys R Us, I'm not strong enough to Oko a, a defensive Amoongus. And as a result, I put myself in Oko range to a foul play. So this negates that risk, gives me the opportunity to get some defenses up so that I can take on the Pinsir, uh, and gives me the additional power necessary that I can break through um, things like I can Oko the Curum, uh, I can break through the Gligar uh, and not really be too afraid of the Gligar. I can 1v1 the Amoongus very easily and um, put, and of course the Bug Bite um, will allow me to Oko the, uh, after a couple of setup, I can beat the Slowbro and I can take on the Hoopa. So of course the setup that I, the set that I have here is um, walled by Empoleon, so I need to, I need to play that, I need to be, like, a little aware of that, um, I'm, I have enough special defense investment now that random HP fire techs shouldn't be as much of a problem for me, it's been a problem for me against his team <laughs> the two times that I played him this season, so I need to be, um, I need to be cautious of that, and so I am, and so I am, Ladies and gentlemen, and so I am. So Big Burb is next. Rocky MZ Head Smash, Earthquake, Hidden Power Ice, and U-Turn. Um, Edgequake is very good against his entire team, except Gligar. And HP Ice is quad effective against Gligar. Um, I have relatively decent special attack on Big Burb. Don't sleep on it. 112. Um, I'm in a great speed tier uh, that ties the Alolan Raichu. Uh, if it's not in electric terrain so that's the speed tier i'm looking at there um and then just u-turn so really looking to last game was all about hard read hard prediction and it worked out for me twice and it didn't work out for me twice and so i want to scout a little more this game um that's something that i think i've been missing 
with my matches against Envy and have turned them into what felt like very random, uncontrolled situations. Um, U-turn can be helpful, especially because even though I don't have it on Proto, I actually have it on Mew. Choice Scarf, Earth Power, Ancient Power, Ice Beam, and U-turn. As I mentioned, Edge Quake, very good against MB's team. Very, very good against MB's team. And the Ice Beam to help me take on the Gligar, the only thing on his team that can reliably get it. So if you actually see, these two Pokemon are shockingly similar. Uh, uh, they just hit on different sides of the offensive scale with the exception of the ice, which is uh, specially offensive, but that's better anyway because I would rather be hitting Gligar's special uh, than anything else. But those, the, those three typing and then with the U-turn coverage means I can be cycling in and out until I get into a position where I can launch off that super effective attack. Um, part of the reason I have uh, built the team the way I have Archeops um, outspeeds and has the quad effective coverage for Pinsir. Mew outspeeds because of the Scarf and got the quad effective coverage for Pinsir. Remix, of course, a great Pinsir answer. I, I know that Blacephalon can beat his team, but I need the priority gun. I need it. And looking at his team, the only priority he has is that quick attack. So, um... Yeah. Does Silvali get quick attack too? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not worried about a quick attack from Silvali. I guess Aqua Jet on the um, Empoleon, but that's like not really a thing. Although he did bring it against Necro Stevo with the Swords Dance set, but I think that's too like random tech, so I'm not I'm not too worried about that. The the Shaman is Seed Flare Earth Power, Hidden Power Ice, Healing Wish. Seed Flare, um, obviously just my very high powered stab, has the potential to get those spadef drops, can potentially break through, it's a relatively safe click. I've missed it three times this season, which is somewhat unfortunate, but you know, 85% move, that's what you're, that's what you're risking there. Uh, we've got the Earth Power, uh, super effective coverage against the Coco, although Seed Flare would do the same amount of damage to it anyway. Super effective coverage against the Empoleon. Um, super effective coverage against the Raichu and uh, against the Magmortar. So obviously three of the four things that I listed that are that Earth Power is super effective against, Grass is actually neutral against and because of the power difference and the stab is actually the same power, um, but it's, it's a safe click in a lot of ways where Seed Flare might not be. It will hit the um, Amoongus for neutral, for example, where the Seed Flare would be quad resisted. So uh, just thoughts just thoughts we've got the hp ice uh the additional coverage again earth or uh, sorry ground type ice type amazing coverage against his team cannot stress that enough um throwing on rock is actually great too but like you'll you'll kind of see the theme here i want to be able to threaten with super effective coverage anything that i think is a super likely bring for him and then failing that we'll just start playing stab games or maneuvering as necessary to try and get me in and uh, and get the setup and so if I'm able to play the Mew, the Big Burb, and the Remix correctly to overly threaten or take out the uh, Tapu Koko and the Mega Pinsir, then Head Went Boom can be the um, can be the sweeper for me, I think. And failing that, I might just have to set up in the mid game, pop off a couple of Mind Blown. But look at the set, guys. Mind Blown, Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, Flame Charge. If you look at his team, he doesn't really have anything that resists all of them, and the things that are neutral or or do have the resist, um, they just don't have the defensive to match up against it. Head went boom with the focus sash means I can potentially get off a flame charge and live a hit, and then turn around and start sweeping with the flamethrower or the shadow ball. So um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Head went boom is always weird uh, because I've I've put it in positions to sweep in the past and it's been very effective for me and then other times i've sat on it for too long and put it in a position where it can't do much so i'm not gonna make that mistake again headwind boom can come in in the mid game as well i need to stop playing it like it has to come in at the very end uh, i need to play it a little more hard and fast if necessary uh, kind of like i did with Haxorus a lot this season. Like Haxorus would come in and I'd say, I know I'm gonna take a hit, I know I'm gonna get a Dragon Dance up, and I'm probably gonna get one or two kills from it. I need to be able to be okay with that happening with Blacephalon. Um, 
of course, uh, getting rocks off my side will be important to have that focus sash be super useful for me. Uh, and if it looks like that's not gonna play out in my favor, then my next move there is just gonna have to be pop off a couple of mind blowns and just annihilate things because there's not many things on his team that are okay with taking a mind blown. Um, unless, or, or, and if they are, they're definitely not gonna wanna take a shadow ball from it. I'll tell you guys that much. So, um, I think that's pretty much everything here. Anything I haven't really addressed? Uh, mindset concept going into this game. Um, I'm, I built two teams actually uh, that I wasn't really sure which one I wanted to bring. I built a much more defensive team. The reason I didn't want to do that is uh, too many of his offensive mons have set up that I can't truly take advantage of in a very meaningful way because of my walls. My walls, I feel, are a little too passive um, and don't net me momentum. They just net survival. And that can be okay, except that MV, like I said, he's very good at making hard reads, and it it worries me. It, I'm I think I'd be too worried with it. I'd be too worried to switch in my walls against things that are there supposed to wall, uh, and ultimately he has too many breakers, um, too many wall breakers in things like the Hoopa, the Curum, uh, even the Tapu Koko to an extent, and Pincer, and just the setup opportunities that they have there. They scare, it scares me too much. So I, I, I kind of looked at it for a little bit and it just, it worried me. Uh, so what I'm looking at here, uh, my, my path to victory, the, the match notes that I have for myself. Um, Blacephalon can be the, the game winner, can be the end game sweeper, but I need um, Pinsir down uh, and, or I need to get a flame charge up before Tapu Koko comes in. And if I can succeed in both of those regards, um, could certainly get an endgame sweep with the Blacephalon. The Big Burb, Remix, and Mew are certainly going to be primary ways of me threatening or taking out um, the Tapu Koko, the Mega Pinsir, the Gligar, the Tefiti. Probably my only safe switch into the... Gligar and the, well, I mean, Gligar's not super offensively threatening, but it is a good switch into that. Uh, good switch into the Tapu Koko. Big Burb, uh, I'm really gonna, I'm really hoping the Rocky MZ Head Smash can just clutch something, get a clutch kill on something. The Proto, you're here to set up and force him to sack something, um, because his defensive mons don't don't beat me 1v1. Uh, his Gligar won't beat me 1v1. His Slowbro, I guess it depends if he's packing fire coverage, but probably shouldn't be able to if I'm successful in getting my setup up, especially with my Spadef investment and Roost uh, and the, the Amoongus as well. So another thing about this, even though uh, I, my stab is resisted by the Empoleon. Proto can still net a lot of damage against the Empoleon, even if it's packing that HP fire coverage like it did last time. And if I can eliminate the Empoleon, uh, if it does have the HP fire, for example, I can come in with Remix and potentially still HP ground it back and take it out that way. But I can. it also means I can win the Rocks War with his Empoleon. So that's something to consider also. If I can just weaken that, get into a position where it will go down, uh, Bug Bite might also be huge if he's packing. The last couple of times I played against him, I think he's been packing like a Wakan or a uh, or a Shaka Berry. And if I can eat those, then, then you know I can potentially net the Oko with my significant ground coverage that I have on this team as well. So uh, another thing potentially, I, honestly, guys, um, maybe I'm dragging this on a little too long, 25 minutes, uh, but it's just because there's it's the third time playing him, and so you. At a certain point, you need to, like, believe that in the prior matches, someone has shown... In playing him twice, he has shown me his hand because there are things he needs in order to win. Even last match where he brought some crazy sets, those weren't in lieu of win cons. He's always had the Coco. He's always had the Pinsir. He's always had the Empoleon. Those three are coming. I need to have answers for them. And I feel that I'm very prepared for them this time. Plenty of things that will outspeed and have the super effective coverage, like the Mew, um, 
and the and the remix. Tefiti as a decent switch into two of those three. Big Burb uh, to help me take out the Empoleon, uh, help me provide that coverage to destroy some of his walls, get me some momentum. And really that's gonna be the name of the game, guys. Uh, keep the offensive pressure on my end because I, his offensive mons, if I give them a free turn, can sweep me. Um, unless I keep Ditto safe. And so that's my big thing. Keep Ditto safe, don't let him become um, eligible to position himself to sweep me by keeping Remix safe um, until uh, I've removed any potential threats uh, that could sweep me at the end there. Uh, and then see what I can do by sweeping either with Big Bird, Mew, Headwent Boom, or Proto. So very offensive game plan for me this week. And uh, I'm gonna go check in with MVC if he's looking ready to battle because he said we were gonna battle. Uh, and I'm 13 minutes late at this point. I said we were gonna do it um, at 11, it's 11, 13. So yeah, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to this battle. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, uh, but because I really wanna be E4 Geo again. I made, I made the Elite Four last season. I wanna do it again this season. It's gonna mean um, having to take on, take on my boy, but I'm gonna set myself up in a position this time and then no quick claw this time guys there's no quick claw so if i get this win it's not because of rng hacks uh it's because um i think i have i think i have the team necessary in my last team builder for week two i kind of mentioned that i had a few things up my sleeve the big one here is scissor um i think is huge against his the the curum which otherwise is a big offensive mess for me and uh, the setup I have this time, much more defensive, much harder for him to take advantage of. And uh, I think I need to I need to play it as such. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. And uh, let's go for it, guys. Let us, let us go into this and get back-to-back -back wins against the Lord MV himself. Uh, so as always, my name is Jim Little Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys tomorrow.